It's lunchtime, and the Broken Cafe is open for business. Live from Studio A in the heart of Delray Gallery, Dawn and Freddie S. and their team are ready to serve up a huge portion of fun for lunch with friends and neighbors. So let's break open that lunch pail and unwrap that sandwich you brought and take a front row seat in the Brooklyn Cafe and get ready to enjoy some humor and hot topics. It's time to get a healthy serving of hope and happiness to help your day go by with a smile. Your hosts, Dawn and Freddie S., are ready to talk about food, health, dating, or just plain dream making. If you have a story to share, a movie review, restaurant critique, or just a coincidental thing to happen to you, Call in toll free at 888-565-1470 right now. Sit back and enjoy your lunch break at the Brooklyn Cafe. Here are your hosts, Dawn and Freddie S. Welcome, welcome to the Brooklyn Cafe, to all our friends in South Florida, L.A., San Francisco, New York. I'm a little tongue-tied because Dawn made the coffee, <laughs> and this thing will put hair on your hair. This is a Cafe Butelo put it to shame. Holy smokes, where the hell did you learn to make coffee? <laughs> you know, Chanel's Woo. making it really good, and I tried her technique, but the organic coffee, our new coffee, is a bit stronger than the original signature blend. You so could I use think less. I, I think I need to cut mm. it. Over. Yeah. Exactly. It's a good cup of coffee. You like it? It's good. Really? It's what we what? That's what we need today. Happy Monday, everybody. And what are we doing today? We got a bunch of Spanish women in here. And we do. We have United Latina women. ladies. We have Sandra Torres with us. Sandra Torres. And our first hour, I can't even say our first hour, our first half hour, we had Ned Moulton. So we had brunch with the artist, which you do on Monday mornings with Ned Moulton. And he's creating a new amazing Brooklyn Bridge that we're waiting to see. And Ned reminds me of um some other gentlemen I know. Who's that? Once I think you hit a certain age, you're very happy to paint naked ladies, is all I can say. No, I, know, I think there's just no holes barred. He's like, what's this? Another naked lady. Who's this? Ned. Yeah, but who's the other? Lady. I can't say. I'm just saying. There, you know somebody like likes painting naked ladies? fascination that like, older men like painting naked ladies. Well, of course they do. <laughs> They're better than painting naked guys. Just it's saying. It's a whole new concept for me, is all I can say. Now, I'm really excited about today's piece because we talked about this for a week. We were talking to Sandra, and she always has a new group of women that come along mm -hmm. so that we can sort of mix the cookies with the milk here. And it's really cool the way you do. What? Mix the cookies with the milk. Yeah, you know, when you, you remember having chocolate chip cookies, and then you went to the Oreos, and then you went, you, you always a different cookie. You I don't can't even. That's all. We just Freddie, remember what you told me today? Foot and mouth. <laughs> Foot and mouth. Check the hell. <laughs> just stop right while you're ahead. Speaking of which, I don't know where any of our CBD is. It's all gone. I know. I don't understand this. Where you is it? Do you think people take it? Well, if it ain't here, Did don't you take it home? No. I don't know. we got to get some we more CBD. We have to lock it up. This is ridiculous. Ridiculous. So what happens when you leave things on the set, they develop legs, which is really crazy. That's how good the CBD is. I'm going. Yeah. Say hi to Sandra. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Dawn. I'm so excited. I love having Sandra on our set. And I love it when you host your shows at NN because when I turn on the radio and I listen to you, I just love hearing your voice on the radio. Aww, thank I you. I think you just do amazing interviews and you bring an incredible energy and you, such great women that you always bring forward. Yes. Who do we have today? We have a nice group today. I did a workshop on Wednesday, and these are some of the ladies that came to my workshop. And so we have Wendy. I'll let each of them introduce what they do individually, but we have Wendy and Sylvia here on set, and we have Angela and Yolanda. Uh, which one's side. Angela and which is Yolanda? Angela? Angela? Yes. And Yolanda? Yolanda. 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 I'm, I'm going to screw that up so I don't. It's okay. It's so common. It's One, two, three, it four, five. It is Russian? Yeah. Are you Russian? But you speak well, Spanish. Yeah, my mother is Puerto Rican, but my father is Jewish. So and you're uh, Puerto Turkish. Rican, Russian. You're Turkish. Yes, I did Ancestry.com. Talking to your microphone so we can hear Wait, you. Wait, you're Puerto Rican, Jewish, and Turkish? 
Well, if you think Sephardic Judaism, so you know that they got Spain, they have yeah. uh, Turkish. I mean, it's not the Ashkenazi, so we have uh, Russian, and we have uh, Native American on the Puerto Rican side. So that links up, and I have some mixture of black and me, which is far back there. You make the but United Nations. I'm a multicultural mommy. I mean, I really am. A multicultural and she shows mommy, mommy in there, too. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you speak Russian? No, but you I speak have Turkish? practiced Hebrew with prayers when I've gone to synagogue and I've had fellowship with my Jewish friends. And I have Spanish and I have uh, half a year in Italian and half a year in French. And I Holy went to these smokes. countries. So I always, and then we have a lot of um, Haitian culture. So I'm trying to learn Of course Creole. you do. Of course. We might as well learn Creole because and what the hell? Business. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's all business. What do you do? Uh, digital marketing. I, um, of course you do. I do the sales business development side, and I still go to school at nighttime for finances and accounting. And you have so, kids, because you're mommy. I have kids. Yes, I have kids. How and old are your kids? I'm also a soccer mom type of thing. Oh, my um, gosh. I have a 13-year-old, and I have an 8-year-old. You, Freddie, make you me, know, we really don't do enough in a day. You make me nervous just knowing you. <laughs> <laughs> How do you do all that in a day? You know, you think we're busy? Oh, I hustle. I hustle. It's like, it doesn't even sleep there. Even on the side, I do Uber Keep and Keep that Lyft. close so we can hear you. Uber and Lyft on the side just to... Create that conversation. Get out of my bubble. She from does home. Uber and Lyft driver. That too, and I, I'm not like ashamed of it because I've met so many wonderful business owners. Ashamed? Oh no, I was going to be an like, Uber driver wonderful. before I met this man. But it's she flexible. can't. Flexible. You cash out right there. Yeah, but it's she can't. Money. She can't find the store. I can't even corner. find my way here sometimes. <laughs> you follow the map, and I have a little <laughs> map holder. It doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> no, Dawn travels in Dawnland, so she she will never <laughs> find. Says, What's wrong? I said, I can't get my way to the gallery, and I left my house 45 minutes ago because every road had another traffic jam on a Monday morning. Just one of those things. She'll, That's fascinating. She'll, you'll, you you'll call her for an Uber drive, and she says, what do you mean? I'm at the place. No, where are you? I'm in Delray. Well, I'm in Boca. I mean, that's the kind of deal <laughs> you get with. That's incredible what you do in a day. Thank you. I'm exhausted just knowing you. <laughs> What was your luncheon on Wednesday? Was it for United Women Professionals? Yes. So it was the United Women Professionals, and we did a workshop, Roadmap to Your Success, and we kind of just planned out really our vision and mission and kind of some details on how to get there. And it's mm -hmm. not necessarily you have to be Latino to be in your group, No. Right? United Women Professionals is open Russians. to everyone. In then Turkish. I have the United Latinas, which I just started that one. So that I just did the kickoff mixer for that last week on the 16th. But the United Women has been happening a lot longer it's been we're about it almost a year now and hey, what does united women do so united women professionals the mission behind it is to bring women together to collaborate and co-create on different projects like writing a book we were talking about that getting doing a co-authored book where we get a lot of women everyone has a story everyone has something that they can a pay it forward story so really it's okay a lot of us want to be authors let's let's get that ball rolling by doing one chapter. You know, we each kind of come together and, and write one chapter of something impactful in our lives that really changed us, and that's one project. Um, ultimately, the mission is companies. You know, let's build organizations together. Let's bring women at the table. Let's have a women, you know, where we have strong women that have ideas that come from all walks of life that can contribute to the big picture. Because alone, we're so, these solopreneurs, it's very difficult to do things alone. But together, we put our collaborative energy together we can build so much more. That was my whole idea, our whole idea, and we talked to you the first time about when you had your radio show, mm -hmm. was to bring each one of these women forward and say the first Thursday of the month, it's one, two, and we go through the month, and everyone has their segment. Mm -hmm. And that show, with you as the host, becomes this entirely powerful womenpreneur sh radio show. And everybody and owns a piece of it. you don't have to worry about finding guests, right? Everyone like a co-op, right? So it's like a radio show co-op where everyone owns that piece of their show and they have that 30 minutes and it's it's theirs to use it, to grow it, to bring, to do. And this way no one has the whole thinking I have to plan this whole radio show. It's, it's all just, on me. It's yeah. just one little one little segment. And I have to applaud because, uh, you know, we, you and I have spoken plenty about my Latino brothers and sisters that we, you know, and I love my culture, but you know something, <laughs> sometimes, man, we just don't get it. We just don't get it. You know, give me a cafe bustelo and life is done. And that's not the way it is, especially with what's going on now. You know, you're a prime example of everything that the Hispanic culture is missing now. You can do driver, you can be a coach mom, you could do a business, you could be whatever you got to do, you do. If you have the right platform and the right energies channeled into that platform, it isn't as difficult as it sounds. Mm -hmm. So I applaud you. 
I mean, you're you're a freak of nature nature anyway. You know, when I first met level, you, yeah. thank you. I mean, the way <laughs> the way I met you was through Facebook. I got to be on your show. I was like, Whoa. well, she heard us doing another Latina show, and she said, I have to have to meet you. I have to come meet you. And I'm glad that Annie is here because yeah. Annie, I've been prepping to meet you and to meet the ladies. Annie is my Latino connection, and as you could tell, her versing in Spanish because we did a spot before, which you will see on the air. Before she's come a long way. I mean, you see what in I'm talking two weeks. about. Yeah, two weeks. Two but you weeks, can walk Annie, twenty miles. Amazing. You can walk two hundred miles in two weeks. Yeah. But you've come a long way. You're comfortable in the camera. I mean, I freaked her out. This woman had her own show, because I put you on the spot. And I think that one of the messages I want women to know is that you guys are on the spot, and you got to come out fighting, and you got to come out strong because that first impression is always the most important. It's like when I met Dawn, and I asked her to come and work with me, and she turned me down like for four years, saying, "No, I don't got nothing to say." Well, find something to say. Damn it. Remember that? I knew I had a lot to say, and I think a lot of women know they have a lot to say, but nobody listens. And when you're sitting at a dinner table, and it still happens to me, to this day, I can be sitting with my extended family at a dinner table, and I say something and no one hears it, and I say it again. My daughter says the same thing. Why doesn't anybody listen? Why is everyone interrupting? And as women, as mommies, you're cooking, you're serving, yes, I used to do that too, and nobody's listening to you. And if we, can, if it takes going to work and starting a radio show, and for us reaching 60,000 people a day, for women to say, you know what, I have something to say and someone's gonna listen, then that's our platform. But it's, it's unique because you have an organization here that ventures out, and I wanna venture out further. I wanna do the Cafe Latino style. I think it's, a, it's, it's the wave of the future. And to give women an opportunity because, you know, guys, they have the opportunity. All you got to do is show up. You know, we could take that spot. Yeah, I know. I'm thinking about that. <laughs> thinking we have a really it. prime spot on Thursday nights that we could do Cafe Latino I know, style. I know. I'm thinking about it. Okay, let's, let's get through the interviews Sorry, first. Because there's a lot of people we here. Got, and we've got Miss Universe. She's coming as well. Is she? She's on her way. You know, I met her one time. I spoke to her twice, and we're old friends. You're old friends. That's right. I know Miss Universe. It must be the coffee. Anyway, so Sandra, how do you want to do this? You want we want to introduce the women and have a, them a little say bit about what, what they, they do. do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and, but real quick, I want to touch on that point. You know, and it's touch the it. it's the women that feel they they're silenced. You know, they have so much to say, and it's okay. You know, I was talking about this when I did my networking event with United Latinas. That even as being in a boardroom full of men, which was my professional life, there was always the, I have something to say or I have an idea, but so, it can be intimidating in a room full of men. I think it's culturally in all women, right? And it's time to get past that. It's time to get past that. It's time to push past your fears and do it because you're gonna look back and regret everything you didn't do and everything you never got a chance to say. So we it's talk so about important. that all the time. But if you it's have so an important. opportunity and there's this carrot dangling in front of you and it might change your entire life. You don't know if it's going to, but it might. Do you reach for that opportunity or you go, well, no, I can't because what if everything I know changes? But what if you don't reach for it and you never know? Maverick, I am so happy you're here today. <laughs> Maverick, you're going to be, well, you've got Jacob too and you got Hector. Yeah, but Jacob is on, <laughs> Hector, Hector, come on, swing it. But <laughs> he Jacob, needs some male bonding is what he needs, Maverick. Because what happens is, I got to tell you, I've But done, do you take that opportunity or don't you? You have to. Because maybe you can't go to the soccer games or maybe. Why not? You can't go to I was a soccer mom. I because used to, what if things change? I, the, you know what? Change is all in the mind. I used to cook. My wife, ex-wife at the time, now wanted her career. And I said, go get it. And I was mom at home, taking the kids to school the whole nine, the, the whole pampered thing, which was always a mystery to me, all that. Did all that. Then went to work at night. Because there is no reason why a woman shouldn't. Now, the way it's happening, more men are losing jobs. So guess what? Guess who's back in the workforce? The women. So what are you going to say? That life changed? It didn't change. This changed. You got to take the opportunity. Just like gotta you got to change it. You got to take the In order the to do anything, you have to be the one to take that step forward. Risk it all. You might screw up. You might fail. Who cares? Go for it. Risk it because you're going to look back and regret everything. You have it. And it will change for the better. The more you do something, the more comfortable you do it, the more comfortable you express your voice, the more times you're going to be able to do it in times when you're put on the spot. That's right. And when you're put on the spot. And that's what this whole exercise was about today. <laughs> and I've known you a little while, and I wanted to put you on the spot because I want the ladies to know being on the spot is not a bad thing. Yeah. It's just a little different. 
be a little different because when you're a little different, good things happen. Simple. Yep. I can't wait to hear their stories. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm Wendy Jill. Nice to meet everybody. Wendy Jill. Jill. Wendy Jill. Jill. Okay. Wendy Jill. She actually lives yeah. in my development. Yes. Jill We're Dawn. And we just met. Yes. <laughs> what? 15 minutes ago. No. Um, well. <laughs> no. But tell us what you do. Uh, yeah, so um, I'm a mother of five. I, when you said you're an Uber driver, I think, it, well, at least you're getting paid for driving. <laughs> <laughs> you're cashing out at least, right? <laughs> so um, I'm uh, from Soulquake, and uh, I empower women. What is Soulquake? Soulquake is empowering women to ease and transform their relationships to stress. So one of the things you're talking about is getting out there, you know, dangling the carrot and going out there. Well, again, we all have stress in our everyday lives and transforming your relationship to stress. So a lot of us can be stopped by our stress in life and how to use and utilize stress so that it actually moves you forward. So you're a stress-free coach? Uh, I guess you could, I guess you could I say that. Like We're that. Tra sort of transforming, our, transforming your relationships in life, your relationship to yourself, who am I, uh, what, who am I, what am I, and how do I tick, first of all, in life? Um, you have to know yourself first, and then after that, you know, what are my relationships? Or what are my relationships to other people? What are my relationships to sex? What's my relationship to, to, my, to the animals in my life? Just all your relationships, and if, once you transform your relationship, you can move from uh, surviving to thriving, from li just living life to living life on vacation. So transforming your relationship, transforming your, your belief systems and your thoughts about your life. And do you think you transform, sorry, one relationship at a time? Or is it when yeah. you're going to change your mindset, they all sort of just, they may not even fall into place. They may just change. Well, my experience and my experience with the people that I work with is, is first transform your relationship to yourself. So you have to come first. You have to come first. You know, you, you know, if you're on an airplane and you're, you, they're talking about That's putting right. on your own uh, mask first, you have to do that first. You're no good to anybody else if, uh, if you're not whole and complete within yourself, and and uh, you certainly can't be there for other people. And especially as women and mothers, uh, we have a, we are out there a lot and not in here enough. You know. And so. I, I always wanted to ask a coach like you. Um, Women that are successful, they feel guilty. Especially if you're married and you're bringing home a lot more money than your husband and you're more responsible. I mean, like this lady over here, she has a whole bunch of stuff going on and then bigger things happen to those that strive for bigger things. Do you think that women shy away from the success because they have become successful? And if so, what would you tell somebody like that? What I say is, is guilt is just a part of life. And transforming your relationship to yourself is transforming your relationship to guilt. Guilt's okay. There's nothing wrong with guilt. And you, you, guilt will never disappear in your life. There's never going to be a moment in I your like life that. that guilt isn't going to be there. It's transforming how you relate to guilt when it shows up for you in that moment. You know, are you going to run away from it and try to get away from it? Or are you just going to just confront it, confront it, and say, "I feel guilty. It's part of uh, what's in front of me," and move past it? How did you get involved doing this? Um, I've been a healer my whole life, so it's just uh, a natural progression. And everyone here, Sandra, is a solopreneur? Um, or works for a company. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, I was in e-commerce before. I had an e-commerce uh, business online for uh, 18 years and grew that to $12 million. And, uh, that's all? Yeah, that's all. Just small. And uh, really, I could tell it really wasn't uh, me. Uh, so I'm also writing some books as well. Uh, I know that uh, Sandra's also written some books as well. So Some books. It's not a book. She's writing some I books. I know. I can't yes. even write a page. Yeah. We talked um, about that. My, and the, one of the books I'm writing is just for the successful woman who has it all, including stress and anxiety, being <laughs> kind and true to you. Yeah. Oh, I like that. So what yeah. are some of the highlights of that? Um, again, it, uh, as, we, as I talked about, is uh, transform your relationship to yourself, number one, is who am I, what am I, and how do I tick? And what if it changes your relationship with your kids or your spouse or your significant other when you're being true to you? Uh, there are many, many times as you're transforming, and that's what Soulquake is, uh, when it, the whole thing about an earthquake is, is that there is an unsettling time, right, before the land starts to settle back down. So that's what Soulquake is about, is, is learning to be uncomfortable excuse me, learning to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. I love that. Yes. I mean, that's my model, as you saw today. I took somebody and made her uncomfortable because it's okay to feel uncomfortable. Right. 
And you know, many of us, again, you know, as I said, surviving to thriving, so many of us are just living life. We're not thriving. We're just, you know, getting through the day. And so transforming that, you know, you know, we're here at the Del Rey Art Museum, I'm thinking to myself, yes, we are the artist of our own life. That's right. Yeah. Annie, you hear that? Absolutely. What'd you think? I agree 100%. I've always felt that way that, you know, life really is like an art, you know, so it, it's, it's beautiful to hear the way you word it and the way you phrase it. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm going to tell you something really crazy. When I first met you, it reminded me of Sandra. She reminds us so much of you, she could be your daughter. Really? You have the same Remember personality. Remember we told you that the other night, the yeah. other day. Wait till you meet Sandra, and if you sit down long enough, and you sit down, you're going to say, man, I'm looking in the mirror. Well, she, when she was talking about like everything that she has like with the books and all that, and it's like, that's incredible what you're doing, like bringing people in and putting different mindsets, different views, different perspectives, and then putting it out there, like, wow, I, that's me. Thank you. Good stuff. She reminds us so much of you with that. Oh my gosh. And I didn't realize you were going to meet today, but I'm really glad you get to. Mm -hmm. Your story is amazing because it's not always about the money, right? You have this incredible e commerce $12 million business, and you said, I got to do more. Well, it, it, it is about the money for most people. Um, it is about the money. And again, it is tr transforming the way that you feel about and see, your, see money in your life and how it come, flows through your life and out. So it's like a constant flow, and sometimes we get stuck. It gets stuck. Uh, our thoughts about, for, you know, if, if we have some thoughts from when we were young about money, we didn't have enough. Whatever your thoughts are is what's going to happen. It's going to show up out in your life. But is it, is it making the money? Is it making the money, or is it making money? You understand the difference? Is it the act of working hard to get it, or is it... It's the act of working to get it. Hard is, you, is all... It's, a, it's what you think about it. That's right, because what I think, think that if it? you're not having fun doing it, then why the hell do it? Now I understand what soul quake means. How can people find you? Um, Facebook, Wendy-Jill. That's Wendy it? Yeah. We gotta get you an 800 number. We gotta get you a hot line. No, let's keep going. You wanna keep going? Yeah, keep what going. What happens when we have those 20 new sponsors? We'll so worry about that when going. it comes. Okay. Let's just keep just going. I, I am into this right now. Okay. And you have me wired up with my cafe <laughs> with him. I got coffee going. I'm, you, know, you don't understand. I've waited years to hear something like I know. this. Years. This, I've, I've asked tons of people to do this. I just wanna keep going. But I think that piece, we need to visit that idea with Ms. We Sandra will. over here. We keep going. She All right. Her head. Who else we next got, up, who's next? Hello. Uh, my Get closer name. to the mic. Hello, my name is Sylvia Duro, and first of all, thank you for letting me be here at the Brooklyn Cafe show today, and thank you, Sandra. This is amazing. Y tú eres Latina. Y yo soy Latina. De dónde? De Colombia. I could tell you had the heavy, heavy <laughs> Spanish accent. Yes. I'm made in Italy, grew up in Colombia, and yes, I have this power Latino that I show every time I can. Okay, and how long, how long you've been Latina? How long, <laughs> how long, what is it that you do for a living? What do you do? I'm a real estate agent. Okay. And, um, but it's not just my, the way I handle my business is no, I sell a house and I show you a house and I sell your home. No, I connect with people. And when I find out about uh, Sandra and all the groups, I say, this is what I'm looking for. This is what I need in my life. This is... I want to hear other women's, I, I, and I want to share all my experience. I want to be able to help people any way I can. Okay. Now, do you, do you um, as a real estate person, is it in Boca, Del Rey, or anywhere? Uh, most of my business is in Boca Raton and Del Rey Beach, but I'm all over Palm Beach County. Okay. And how long you been doing this? I'm doing this for the past four years. Oh, and so you're a rookie. <laughs> But before that, I was behind the scenes doing uh, property management and, and the business side of the construction for a long time. And I say, uh, I don't want to be behind the scenes, behind a desk anymore. I want to do more. I want to be out there. I, I want to connect with people. Is it an advantage for you to be Latina in, in the real estate game? It, yes, it has an advantage uh, because I speak the language and a lot of people feel more comfortable doing transactions, especially when it's a first-time homeowner. There's so many questions. There's so many things involved in, in the process. And when they find that they can express themselves in their own language, like the Spanish, it helps a lot. And what you bring to the group, now which group does she belong to? 
Well, she came, attended to the United Women Professionals Group, the okay. workshop I just did. So the workshop. So you came to the workshop. Yes. And what did you feel you got out of the workshop? Well, I, I really like the idea that we, uh, as, a, as a mom, I'm a mom as well, we have so many things on our plate and we never have a moment, a moment to sit down and decide, well, what I want for me. Mm-hmm. And I'm a big believer that when, when we know where we're going, the rest is easy kids, husband, work, family members, she finds it outsiders. Easy. Do you think it's, it's different in each stage of, I can't even say your life, it's your life and your kids' life, that women then say, right, our kids are grown. Mm-hmm. Mary Jo, you've got five, so, I mean, Mary Jo, I don't know. Grown, son of a litter, like right, so. so you're in a different stage. <laughs> when your kids are younger versus when they're grown and out of the house, what you can do for you. Exactly. Well, it's, it's different. I have I have 11 year old boy, so I'm still at, at the home and I have this little one that is growing into this person. And I think I have the big responsibility right now in my hands to make things right. So the only way it's to show with the good examples. And we talk, you know, I feel like it's coming. They were part of the conversation I had with you last week. Yeah, because part of reaching for that carrot and I think in the next opportunity is if you don't, what kind of example have you then set for your kids? Mm-hmm. Because if it's there and they go, mom, why didn't you try? You've got no excuses. And certainly when your kids are grown and out of the house, there are no excuses not to reach for what you truly want to do. Exactly. Now, real estate people are aggressive by nature. True? Yes. I mean, you have to it's, be. It's, it, you it's have to. A, it's a negotiation. You are always on the table doing negotiation, and then you are representing a, your client, and you have to negotiate for your client. That's the main reason they hire you. Yes. It's like an attorney. Uh, the, <laughs> the more ferocious, yes, the better the outcome. you have to be. But you know what? Uh, you, you need to be human. And, 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 and women, we have that, that caring side. And you have to understand. You have to understand. She's tough, though, this one. She is tough. That's what makes me laugh. That's what makes me. And you're, ma- and you're married, Latina, yes? And, and you're married, yes? I'm married. And your, and your husband, how does, he, um, how does he sort of work with your aggressiveness? Because it, I know that you're not supposed to take it home, but I'm going to <laughs> I was married to a real estate well, lady. Um, Forget he, about it. Um, we, met, we met in his office. I knocked the door and I was looking for a job back 15 years ago and he is a general contractor and at the time he had an air conditioning business here in the Ray, a commercial business. And I knocked the door and I say, I'm looking for a job, I hear you're looking for a business assistant that speaks Spanish and English, uh, I can do this job. <laughs> so from the moment we Again, met... Again, being aggressive. <laughs> mm-hmm. From the moment he met me, uh, you know, we, we connect, we connect. And I think that he sometimes say, you know what? You're tough, you're tough. I say, well, I learned also from you. It's true, it's true. Real estate women are the most aggressive, one of the most aggressive species on the planet. I guess you have to be, right? Because think of the competition. There's so many real estate agents. Yes. And a yes. lot of women because you can a make your own hours. So it and, becomes and, a flexible type of the, job. Mm-hmm, and a, a lot a, lots of men. And, and, and being a Latina, we, we grew up with this macho thing in our minds. Oh, you know, you're the lady and, and the boys are the machos. And it's, it's not. I don't think the it's machismo, right. Machismo the machismo. Machismo in Florida is the largest... <laughs> Black you, hole in the world. Yes. Terrible you here. Seem to so. really be falling in. Why is that? You poor thing. Right? You wanted to bring all these Latino women, and it's always about the machismo and the men. And it, here you are, alone. Maverick, are you Latino? Nope. It's all you, well, the, 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 <laughs> But the, the funny thing is that you have to learn the game. So if you're going to be involved with a real estate start there, woman, then, you know, what you're asking for is an aggressive, it's an aggressive business. Yes. Even for the guys. Yes, because that wasn't You have business. to be on top of everything. That's right, and you have to make sure that everything until the closing Thank happens. Annie, and Annie, can you talk to Michelle? She might be lost. She's our next guest. Thank you, hon. We, we make Annie do everything. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to answer the phone. All right, good. So, and then the mortgage and all that stuff goes with what you do. Yes, I work and close with the mortgage companies and uh, the home insurance, also with title companies. So, so I keep. A uh, very nice uh, group of professionals around my business okay. to support. Excellent. How can somebody reach out to get The best uh, way to reach me is uh, my cell phone. 
It's 754-367-2155. I also have a, a web page. It's sylviagerove.kais.com. And who do you work for? Kais. I work with the Kais company. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And the office is located in Boca Raton. I want her coffee. to say it. <laughs> Want some coffee? No, are you kidding? I'm flying. There's three of you. <laughs> Kais is a big, big company. Yes. It's so a family-owned company. It's been in the business for 96 years. Um, wow. I'm very happy working with them. It's it's an honor to work with people that it's it, it has the heart on the business. Wait a minute. Kais is K-E-Y-E-S? Correct. I thought it was keys. I thought it was keys. <laughs> How do I know? You know, not for nothing. <laughs> but you, you set me up twice. There was a guy who did a joke here because they misspelled the words, right? I think it was cinnamon and grandma or something. Yes. And they're all laughing. They're laughing hysterically. And I'm like, what are you laughing at? Something I'm making <laughs> cinnamon buns, but it was spelled as the word cinnamon, c- synonym, and grandma was grandma's recipe. And he says, what's wrong with it? That's the way I spell it. <laughs> so... I thought it was keys. That's why I didn't recognize it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, thank you for coming by. I appreciate you being here. Thank you. Um, and we keep going. All right, so let's keep going. Yeah, we have Angela. She's got a great promo, and I'd love for you to tell them what you're doing. Yes, thank you so much for having me here. This is amazing. She has a radio um, voice. You hear that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you hear that tone? Oh, I have a, yeah. You do. <laughs> you do, you have a radio voice. Um, well, anyways, I love to beautify people. I do. That's, um, I am a hair and uh, makeup artist. I've been in the business for over 20 plus years. I love it. That's my passion. I love to teach women how to, you know, hot tips about makeup. I, I specialize with uh, airbrush makeup, so, um, you know, to make you look flawless. And also, I am... Um, what I do is also I do formal events, any uh, weddings, any uh, quinces, and all kinds of amazing events. You know, I travel also. I travel around, um, and I am a self-independent contractor too, wanting to build my business. So um, I have a promo that I'm doing uh, for first-time guest. I'm doing a, a haircut and blow dry, complimentary for first-time guest. And any referrals, I'm giving out gift certificates. So just to help build my business. Yeah, where are you located? Um, in Boca Raton, uh, Rio Salon. And, um, where is you, it? Uh, Boca, uh, it's Rio, Rio Salon in Boca Raton. Where is Rio Where in Boca Raton? What's the address? Oh, it's uh, 9136 uh, uh, Glades Road in Boca Raton. So Glades and? That's on the corner. Glades That's and okay. Lions. Glades and Lions, yes. okay. You're yes. on the corner building? Yeah, uh, yes, we have a corner building, yes. I know exactly what you're doing. How would you know what I that don't is? know, because I read a lot. I don't know. So Glades and Lions, it has to be where the sushi place is or where the Dollar Tree is. It's where the Dollar Tree is, okay. right next door. Right next door. That's yes. where the gr- dog groomer is there, too. <laughs> and how I lo- also help men. The dog groomer? You know, you know, men? Also. Well, I ain't got much hair, but I'll take the <laughs> blow dry anyway. You know, we okay. wanted to do a whole segment where he actually gets the rest All of right, his enough. hair shaved. Enough. We don't need to go there. But that's you not, have. That's we right. We can do it on air. Anyway. We've been trying ex- for years. Excuse me. We're talking. We're having an interview over here. <laughs> Thank you very much. How long have you been doing it? Uh, 20 plus years. Oh, do wow. you have your own makeup line? I don't right now. Do but you want to have your own makeup line? I do. Yes, I it's do. It's really simple. I can show you how simple it is. Okay. And I don't, I used to, uh, <laughs> I used to own a uh, salon in New York. Oh, wow. Yeah. So awesome. she wants her own makeup line or you want to share the other line that we We're work with? We're going to do both okay. because you can white label it and poof, if she likes it and yada, 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 you're going to love this. This is a whole different animal. Let me ask you about the airbrushing. My bathroom is a danger zone. Okay. The amount of makeup and hairspray one day is you, your hand stick. I can't imagine adding, adding an airbrush foundation to my bathroom routine. Oh, yes. Is it a mess? True. It's not really. Not, not really. really. I mean, yes. Yeah. You do it at the house? You do it in your home? I, yeah. What, what I do is, um, well, if you want airbrush makeup, like for your wedding or something, I, you know, I do that at the house or wherever the, uh, the place is going to be. So you know the spray paint cans that you do cars with? Yeah, you're going to spray paint your, your face? face? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> That's funny. But it's flawless, fix right? It, it is flawless. Fix it then. <laughs> fix a flat. <laughs> fix a flat. <laughs> I can fix a face. 
Um, what is your specialty? What do you think you're the best at what you do? What is the best? Haircutting. You're I love haircutting? to design. I love air, um, razor cutting. I also specialize. I do a diva curl. A lot of people do not know how to cut curly hair. I stayed out of the salons because nobody knew how to work with my hair. So now I specialize with curly you hair. You have curly so, hair? Yes, I have very curly hair. But really? I use, Where is I, it? It's Keratin. An art. You know, people fly to New York. Wait a minute, I want to know where her curly hair, hair is. <laughs> Seriously? Where's your curly hair? She's good. It's, She's the master of blood. That's drive. curly? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Annie. <laughs> I'm so happy you're here. Annie's uh, like yes. my personal assistant, I think. I don't know. She's amazing. So more ladies. Come on in, ladies. So let me ask you. So so cutting hair to you I thought that was Sunny Alpha. Oh. I thought that's who it was. Gotta be so, Sanders ladies. Yes. Yeah. So, so um, cutting hair for you Thank is you. a specialty. Yes. And you belong to this organization? I do. I went uh, to Sandra's group last Tuesday, and it was amazing. I had, um, it was life-changing for me. I, I just, Tell me you know, why. Um, because a bunch of ladies getting together, and it really empowered me, like, you know, to network with these wonderful ladies and getting to know these beautiful ladies and just hearing about their stories, how they got there, and how they're doing. And mm -hmm. to me, I just feel like that's, I don't know, just, it's just an amazing thing. Are, you, a La are you Latina? I am, Puerto Rican. From what part? Um, Santuce. No, de verdad, Santuce. Yeah, poquito español, though. Un poquito español. Yes, what happened Brooklyn, to you? What happened to your Brooklyn. Spanish? You're from Brooklyn, yes. un poquito español? You yes. forgot your Spanish? My father spoke, my mother didn't. Ah. Yes. From Santuce. He yes. is, how do I say it nicely, so happy. I would say like a pig I am. and whatever. I am because if I can. He is so excited to have so many Latino women in here. It's funny oh because God. if I can get my Latino brothers to understand this concept, it the world will be a, a dream. better place. Three years. Once we started working together and we got the broad part of it taken care of, it was to bring. <laughs> that wasn't Latino, my idea. To bring the Latino women forward. And until Sandra, you have the most staying power and you just keep growing and bringing more and more forward. That there's. He's been trying so hard to get this Latina female. Piece. And we talked about it when you had your other show. And I said it, it crosses all cultures in women. But I guess it doesn't. It's just some things do, some things don't. The mom, the relationships, the career, all of that stays the same in women empowerment. But the culture, and Annie, you're a perfect example. Doesn't it's allow just it. It's different, right? Doesn't allow it. And it's, you know, I tried with the men for three years, and I got nothing. I got people who are like saying, Latino guys saying to me, get out of here. And the machismo thing was like running rapid. So one guy wanted to whatever longer than the other and you wanted to be more powerful and that's not what the whole concept was about so anyway so you're actually contributing to the cause of of this deal it's bringing you empowerment it makes you feel comfortable because you know they say to punch a fist you need five fingers right yes. so all of a sudden you feel more energized i do i'm on fire now I am. now let me tell you I, uh, hairdressers are the most unique women in the world not a real estate but hairdressers because you guys know everything. You are like an encyclopedia of knowledge. You hear all the gossip. You hear oh, all yes. the bochinche. You know what bochinche is? <laughs> yeah, you could write a book or a ten. Yes. You know what's going on in Boca, so if we need information, we come to you. You know, oh, bo yes. you know the word bochinche? Claro. So, and it makes them so uniquely different. They are so all around. You know, I know about three words now. What, bochinche, chancleta, and what's the other one? more <laughs> <laughs> I don't know any of the good words so if somebody wanted your services how do we reach you I could give you my phone number whatever and, you want to um, give out but okay. just remember whatever you're giving is going on into the universe so. okay so I work at the Rio uh, salon in Boca it's uh, 9136 Glades Road and my phone number is 561 three five zero eight zero one nine come get your hair cut now okay. this is your place this is not my place. I'm looking to have my own uh, Who salon. Who owns it? Um, it's, a, it's a lady and, that, and her husband that owns the salon, but You're it's cute. a huge salon. Yeah, but she, would she let a camera, camera crew go in there and do something, like a show or something in there? Is I'm it big sure enough to would. accommodate? It's, it's big. It's a really spacious right. place. You've been there for 21 years at that location? No, so. I've been doing hair and makeup for 21 plus So years. you're looking for your own place? I, want I know to a real estate lady place. that can help you out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes, sure. <laughs> because we, there's we a lot of find a perfect location for you. Yeah. 
that is my next step. I have so many creative ideas that I want to do I, in my salon. I always wanted to do a reality show from a salon. You know, Freddie used to own a salon. Yeah, in the, in the Bronx. Awesome. I used to do nails. When nails first came out, would they do the airbrushing stuff? I was first, I used to get kids from school that were learning how to do that. That's awesome. It was ridiculously <laughs> awesome. And they used to send me to go get the nails. Me, of all people. <laughs> I have fun. You really should be Ricky Ricardo tomorrow. Uh -huh. I'm Baba Lou. <laughs> Baba Lou. We doing that tomorrow? We still doing that? Yeah. Yes, we're on location tomorrow, actually, at the Foxworth Fountain in Delray Shores Pharmacy. Yes. Halloween 50 style. Did you get your red hair? I couldn't find red. I got pink. You just dye it red. <laughs> I should go to Angela. That's Here right. Angela, can you make it red in I like 24 can. hours? <laughs> we and can. Make it, make it permanent? <laughs> I used to have eggplant color hair. I don't want to oh, go down that, that road. Pretty. Back in the 80s. Kind of like yours, just a little bit darker. Yes. More auburny. Mm -hmm. Eggplant has purple in it. Yes. And then you complain about your mother's purple hair. I knew you were going to go there. That's right. You put it in my head. All right. So thank you very much. And we'll get back to you with a place. And then next we have. Um, my name is Yelena Asel. And I'm with Digital Marketing, which is uh, digital in the sense of we are located out in Boca. And we have local management dealing with SEOs and PPCs, we try to find businesses that need help What's digitally. What's a PPC? Paper PPC click. is pay-per-click. Ah. Well, does that work, pay-per-click? It does. For Depending on the business, there are some businesses that might not need that. They might need social media platforms, and we help them getting out there and try to help them, like flower shops and things like that. But I'm trying to shine more light to the nonprofit organizations and things that my heart is really passionate about, like showering love, which I shared with the ladies on Wednesday. Showering love. I yeah. like the first word. Right what is the second word? I like the second word. You're such was, a guy. It's a fundraiser that we were having right now. I think my ladies are having it at the college for the psychology club. We're trying to raise money for um, Showering Love, which is an automobile that helps homeless people take a shower. Really? It's the small things that matter a lot to me, like the homeless, like, you know, you give a man a fish. Is a van? He eats. Like a then, shower van that comes around? It's, it has a shower in there. I've seen and, this. And we hook them up and we give them a free shirt and... They had this, they usually go to places that have hurricanes, and there's like six or eight stalls, and people can, it's on the outside of the truck. It's kind of uncomfortable, but they have like these mm -hmm. curtains That's and stuff. That's what's going on right now. Right there at the Lake Worth campus, they're having that going on, trying to raise more money for, to keep them going. It's those things I wouldn't want them to pass and not be funded for. Or the small moms and shops and mom and pop shops that I want them to be highlighted on. I'd rather not any attention come to me as much as I want the attention to go with them in digital marketing. And it's really funny because the things that are most necessary, the most necessary, are the ones that is hardest to raise money for because that's uh, an, a, a deal that should, should be just common. I mean, in New York City, they fight about should it be men or women bathrooms. It took forever to get that resolved. But there's a lot of organizations that are important. You can't put the one we did the other day, Be Like Brit. Yes. Right? Her foundation. But the thing in Britain is one thing. This is, you know, if you go to Pennsylvania. What about no place for hate? Again, different. But you go to Pennsylvania, there are more people living in their cars than there are living in their houses. Go to California. Do you know? Because they're, they're in taking the, the whole mental health initiative out in the, the window. Hills. Everyone's living on the streets because there's no funding for mental health. That's my point. And what do you do with mental health? If you're up north, you give them an airplane ticket down here or a bus ticket here, and it's a one-way ticket. That's why there's so many whack doodles down here because they're bringing them from everywhere. It is what it is. What, what do you want me to call it? Normal, You know, I can't even blame the CBD. People. I can only blame my coffee because there's <laughs> nothing else I can say because that's all you've had since we've been here. And I'm going to tell you, working with the NFL, working with not-for-profit, <laughs> working for not-for-profits is in a unique position. The largest not-for-profit, you know which one it is? Um, no, I want to know which one is the, the, the National Football <laughs> League. The, the NFL is the largest not-for-profit. I got to put a sign on that door that says slide. Well, did, did you know that? No, I, I the didn't NFL is 100%. To children, to animals, to disabled people. Well, the NFL like, has yeah, plenty so of money. Billions, like in boy, billions. And there's and investors out there trying to, you know. That's right. And they had to find a place to park their money because part of the bylaws of the of being a not-for-profit is you're not supposed to put it in your pocket. Mm -hmm. Tax deduction, if, mm -hmm. you use, like, if you put it towards minorities or non-profits. Well, let me ask you, how do the mom and pop, the small businesses, afford your services of digital marketing? We have a digital company we work with, and for how long? He kept saying, no, we don't need it, we don't need it. When mm -hmm. I first started working with you, we weren't even on social media. We were on AMP website. 
and it's grown and I get a little more annoying every day and I said we need this and we need to go there and but it works right so the numbers grow Yes. She just but, loves bringing that story yeah. up because for years. Well, how many times have you apologized to the group? We I apologize I because they. I said to them, "You don't know what you're talking about." Here I am in this business for 18 years, and I says that doesn't work for us. Boy, was I wrong, man! I was wrong. And like podcasts too, we have. We have podcasts now on 15 different stations. We have, I mean, just endless. People say to me, "Oh, I saw what you're doing on your Instagram." It isn't even me. It isn't even you, it's them. But what Daddy. they've done is remarkable. The last three months here, it's just taken a life of its own. But I want to push that forward, you know? And I talked talk to Sandra about this. I want to push it forward because I think that this is long overdue, and I want to do the, the cafe Latino style, whatever name we come up with, but I want to do something in this market. So maybe you can even help us oh, achieve I, that I, Latino I, flavor. I'm living proof of anything is possible. I mean, you drive a lift for God's sake. Even for mental health that you brought up, that's, I'm the vice president of the psychology club at the campus, and we also do humanitarian services, and mental health, no, it doesn't have a face. Depression doesn't have a face. Suicide, we had a... And it doesn't take a day off either. And people don't really address it unless there's a celebrity who just died. That's Other right. Other than that, we need to equip them with resources and consistent, good, positive people in their life to, like, manage helping them put those positive affirmations and help them actually believe what they're talking about. It's, it's powerful it's stuff. And all I the other voices in your head. Myself. Do you think, and I don't know who wants to answer, being a Latina woman, right? Most every, you all are. Culturally, it's different on the voices in your head, how you're brought up, different parental expectations than, than me or Mary Jill. It, it is different because my sister growing up, she never felt that she should say, what she felt. You know, I'll never forget, I used to watch her clean the kitchen every night. It used to kill me. But my father says, don't you dare even look that way. Because it was what people put in your head. You, you know, you, you become a label to what people label you. This is that whole thing that we talk is about. Is it different? In a box. Yeah, I think culturally, it's you, you find yourself in this box where your parents, our parents, just, just culture-wise, where they all, most of them are not, weren't born here in the United States. So culturally, there is this this is your place. You know, your place is in the kitchen, your place is to serve a man. My mother-in-law, she's so hysterical. When she sees kind of the post that I, I share, she goes, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start a group to teach women how to be cooks in the kitchen and do this and all this homemaker stuff. And we crack up laughing. And it, because that's just the mindset, you know, that was, that's the old mindset is you belong here. And that affects women professionals today as Latinas because we battle. It's an internal battle of, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get disapproval. I'm not going to get the full support from my family saying, you can do this. You know, we were talking about that the other day uh, when I was out in Pembroke Pines of this mindset of, you know, not getting told those things. You know, you, this is your box. You stay in your box. You play in your box. And everybody else can go ahead and... and so how do you feel in. being an outsider of the box? I've always been outside of the always. box. Always? Uh, yeah. You know, I, I, there was... i you, she's you, Annie. Right? You have a mic? That I can totally relate 100%. Like, you were talking about that in my head. I'm answering, like, oh, my God, yes. Like, yeah, 100%. And, and it's funny because you got to, yeah. I was just going to say, I mean, again, I'm not Latino. Um, yes, but, you are. Uh, Today, you're Latino. Yeah, Everybody yeah, in here is Latino. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes, you are. Just say, see. What you're speaking of is universal. We That's all right. have sure. those. We all have that. And, again, women empowerment is so new. I mean, we're talking, you know, only decades of women being out of the kitchen for all over the world. It's not just... My mom was never just, in the kitchen. No. So, no my Your mom, mother's never in the kitchen. Never in the kitchen. <laughs> Your mother says, you put me in the kitchen, I'll put Somehow, a two-by-four in it. Your grandmother probably was. No, actually, my grandfather cooked. And my other grandmother didn't cook so well either. She baked. Hence why I don't even know how to make coffee. But I, culturally, it, it's just different, I think. Right, but I always say, I said to Sandra the yeah. first time I met them, there are so many cross-cultural things sure. that are similar, but you talk about Jewish guilt, I think Latina guilt for women is We're even gonna worse than Jewish guilt. We're going to get a shirt that says, you got guilt, it's okay. I mean, we had a conversation <laughs> about that last week with you, right? It's the expectations of a whole other generation. I mean, our guilt, imagine if you're Jewish and Latina, oh my gosh, the guilt level, you're like there's a, that crazy hot scale, there's got to be a crazy guilt scale. I consider it a bracket. You, there you, you go. How many people can you reach? If, if this is who you are, and I'm Puerto Rican, I, I have the Jewish side thanks to my father, so I'm, I was 
well, he was kosher and everything. So I, I was raised with that knowledge of understanding how to handle certain Jewish people, not only there in the home, but in the synagogue. But my mother was Catholic and, and my grandmother was Christian. I mean, I, just being culturally diverse helps you. You use it as a tool, just as money is a tool. You just use it for our gaining power to be able to communicate with more people and network with such beautiful, wonderful people that can all contribute to each other to lift each other up. I mean, Sandra, look at the, how you fill this place. I think we just need to bring out more chairs. No, we, we, need, we need to get also to the ladies in the back. Are they we are, and tell? they're here for the next hour, too. Oh, okay. And we've got Michelle here for right, the next so we'll hour. All right, so spread, spread it out. Michelle, you're from, let's pass the mic over to Michelle. Hi. You're Miss Universe of what country? Uh, Namibia, in, in Namibia, Africa. In Africa. In yeah. Africa. So talk about different cultures. Well, this I, was, is I was about to say, we had a similar background as well. You know, we come from a, a colonized country that has German people and Dutch people and, you know, African people from all over Africa. So Good. culturally as well, um, women were always suppressed throughout time. And being Miss Universe, right back 1992, 93? 1992, yes. I um, mean, it was a while ago. Talk about women empowerment just coming to be then. Was it the pageant life was different, right? We're going to talk about that in the next hour. Very much the so. Camera. There still was a platform where a woman could step out of her role as just a woman in the in the kitchen and actually be a, a, an ambassador for her country. So a, quite a wonderful platform for women to to um, achieve what they wanted to in life. You know Michelle? She knows you. I know Michelle. Yeah. We I met had, her a couple had an times. interview before. We talked a little bit about her and stuff. We did, yeah. What show were you she on? Who the hell knows? You remember what show you were on? I was interviewed by Kendra. Oh, by Kendra. Yeah, oh, Kendra I put Erica. you on, on Tell Us Your Biz, yeah. and she interviewed. Right. That was Kendra's uh, that first so interview. so funny. And, yeah. you know, I met Michelle through John DeMarco. Well, it's a well, very small, small world. Small world, yeah. Mm. And the funny thing is that when I met her, I didn't know that she was former Miss Universe. I just thought she was a good interviewer. And then they told me this <laughs> afterwards, and I went, oh. Now I remember you were telling me the stories. So that wasn't even too long ago. And she says, this has to be the same Freddie. Yes, yeah, that would yes. be me. John DeMarco's tentacles are far-reaching. All over the place. She's but, not even here. But Kendra had a great time interviewing you. It was, it was a, yeah, very it was interesting a, It interview. was a challenge. Well, I think, I think when somebody doesn't really know you very well um, and they don't do much research on you, it's quite interesting because the questions that come out are very wonderful and innocent. And it gave me an opportunity to, to talk in more in depth, I guess. Well, it's funny because your platform is so much, how do we use this? It's so much higher. You're, you're, you're accustomed to doing interviews that, that require that kind of deal. But here, we sort of find out who you are. <laughs> but I wanted her to come because I knew you were, I didn't realize you were gonna really fill the place. And I thought, how amazing to have all of these women and then be able to share your story about women empowerment and you do seminars and it all just comes together. So sorry, Maverick and Hector and Jacob, we just gave them some support. No, we rolling, <laughs> we're rolling, right? We're good for this. They're just rolling with it. But I think what a great women empowerment piece that it is. Well, I think, I think that the important aspect is that, and, and Sandra, you've brought many, many people to the stage and what we do with it now. You know, it's great yep. that you have all of these energies, really great. And you got coaches, you got hairstylists, you got real estate, you got everything in here. I mean, you know we're sitting in the, in the crowd. But now you got to put this to work and make a difference. You know, I, I, when I met Dawn, I think it was three years ago, she put me in touch with the anti-bullying, ADL. I didn't even know what the hell the ADL was. I thought it was just three letters put together. And I got so upset about what I learned about bullying in schools. And all of a sudden, it started coming out in the news and everything else. That I said to Dawn, one day, I want every kid to walk out of school. Every kid that can walk out to walk out and follow me down I-95. I'm going to shut it down. I'm going to walk to Miami. Every kid in every school. Everybody. And you make a point. Now, what's going to happen? I'm probably going to get arrested because it's a federal highway. Well, that's okay. And you walk down to Miami because when you have masses like that, you can't stop it. So you have a mass. Now you got to make some noise. You're going to put it all together. I was just going to say that. It's about making the noise. That's now. right. And we got to push it to make a difference. For and sure. if you want to make a difference, then you know people are going to throw curveballs at you. You know mm -hmm. it's not going to be easy. That's why nobody does it. Yeah. You know, everybody will buy you off and say, listen, here's 15 minutes of fame. Go away. Yeah. Right? Here's a kitchen. Go well, eat. It's, Go it's about the hate also. I don't even know if we're on it. So interrupted Jacob, we go back there. Mm -hmm. He's shaking his head yes. He's good. You keep going. But it's about the hate. And we talked about it in our first show with Ned. Everyone's putting up against anti-Semitism, which is amazing. And being Jewish, incredible. It's not anti-Semitism. It's hate as a whole. Mm -hmm. And the no place for hate, it's enormous. It's hate against 
all religions, all cultures, all races, what's going on. It's not just against the Jews, it's against everyone. And it really, it has to stop. I mean, there has to be a platform and I gotta find someone that's gonna make us a filter for the cafe that it's, what, no hate, no something. We used to have it hanging. Remember we had the no place for hate? I think it's at NN, oh no, it's here, the no bullying. It's here. We something should, we should because take it's, out again. it is it's out coming. of control and it's across all religions and everyone should just be treated as people and it's just about being kind to each other and every day we say that and if that's our platform we just got to make a lot more noise well, right? the, the difference here is that how many platforms do you want to attack okay only You're, the kindness one yeah i understand but then there's the business side of all of this you know what i'm saying you you have to bring in the business side of this thing because in order to be taken seriously in the market, you have to make a statement that holds true. Now, if I tell all my Latino friends, every brother and sister who's Latino, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to go to the bank, and I want to take, take all, all your money out of the bank for one day. One day. Go at 9 o'clock in the morning, as long as it takes, because it's going to take a week for every Latino to take the money out of the bank. Do you know what would happen to this country? I'm talking about across the country. You know what happens? The bank shut down. You shut down the country, honey. You will shut down everything. Everything. I'm not talking about black and white and Jewish. That's all cool. You can keep your money in there. I'm talking about every <laughs> I'm talking about every Latino, every Latino across America. You take out your money for twenty four hours and you will shut it down. And that's a fact, Jack. You can look it up. You can look it, you can Google it. You can because I know a guy who wanted to do that and they threw him in jail because it's deemed as a riot act. You can't mess up with the whole government. But you're talking about power, you want change, you want to change the way things are going, about guns and everything else, you gotta do it economically, you gotta do it intelligently. Don't be signing protests and jumping and burning cars, that's stupid. Ain't nobody gonna take you serious with that. Gotta have a plan. We're gotta gonna be ready for the radio hour? Yes, we gotta change go. Change the setup, stay tuned, we're gonna be back in two and two. Which more is with women empowerment. We got a lot more women to put on the set. Stay tuned and we will be right back. Welcome to the Probiotic Protection Zone. The Airbiotic system distributes millions of safe and all natural environmental probiotics into the air and on surfaces using the latest ultrasonic and nanotechnology. Airbiotics is a movement to save us and the future generations from antibiotic resistant superbugs. Reduce your risk of allergies skin infection, colds, and flu. Get rid of deep-seated odors and enter into a protective shield of Airbiotics. Order your Airbiotics personal or environmental system today at airbioticszone.com. A-I-R-B-I-O-T-I-X-Z-O-N-E.com. Good for use in nursing homes, schools, travel, or daily use. Order yours today, airbioticszone.com. Planners, an American Express travel representative, has a tremendous reputation for quality, service, and very competitive pricing for all of your travel needs. As a Cruise Planners travel advisor, Paul Vadiano will help you discover exciting adventures around the world, from cruises to land tours and completely packaged vacations. Paul specializes in all types of travel and will create an unforgettable vacation, wedding, or event just for you. Find Paul at www.cruiseoptics.com, on Facebook, or by phone at 561-232-2626. We make your travel dreams come true. Science has confirmed that real health comes from raw, organic, and wild foods. Essentials is a complete program of five products to help your body function as nature intended. Premium Ancient Superfood Algae offers energy and stamina. Food-based digestive enzymes help prevent occasional heartburn and may reduce stress from processed foods and heavy metals. Our proprietary probiotics 
help support immune health, regulate bowels, and eliminate toxins. Improve your mood, mental clarity, focus, fast rejuvenation, and better sleep. Order now at eatessentialsnow.com. Essentials, life-enhancing ingredients in the palm of your hand. Eatessentialsnow.com. Attention seniors, the Medicare open enrollment period is here. Know all of your options before selecting a plan. Call Debbie at I Will Advisors and she will take a look at all of your Medicare options from zero dollar premiums. Debbie at I Will Advisors will take the time and care to educate you and help you select the right Medicare plan for you. Call Debbie at I Will Advisors, 954-753-8080, 954-753-8080. Selfless service is the guiding principle that drives Army National Guard soldiers to be always ready whenever disaster strikes. They are your next-door neighbors and your colleagues in schools, offices, and factories. To be a Guard soldier is to stand ready to serve at all times for family, for community, and for country. To learn more. Log on to NationalGuard.com or contact an Army National Guard recruiter in your area. Sponsored by the Florida Army National Guard. Aired by the Florida Association of Broadcasters and this station. Go to your app store and download the WNN app on your Android or iPhone. And never miss a Talk 1470 Minute. Welcome to the Probiotic Protection Zone. The airbiotic system distributes millions of safe and all-natural environmental probiotics into the air and on surfaces using the latest Welcome to the probi- nanotechnology. Airbiotics is a movement to save us and the future generations from antibiotic-resistant superbugs. Reduce your risk of allergies, skin infection, colds, and flu. Get rid of deep-seated odors and enter into a protective shield of airbiotics. Order your Airbiotics personal or environmental system today at airbioticszone.com. A I R B I O T I X Z O N E.com. Good for use in nursing homes, schools, travel, or daily use. Order yours today, airbioticszone.com. Planners, an American Express travel representative, has a tremendous reputation for quality, service, and very competitive pricing for all of your travel needs. As a Cruise Planners travel advisor, Paul Vadiano will help you discover exciting adventures around the world, from cruises to land tours and completely packaged vacations. Paul specializes in all types of travel and will create an unforgettable vacation, wedding, or event just for you. Find Paul at www.cruiseoptics.com, on Facebook, or by phone at 561-232-2626. We make your travel dreams come true. Science has confirmed that real health comes from raw, organic, and wild foods. Essentials is a complete program of five products to help your body function as nature intended. Premium Ancient Superfood Algae offers energy and stamina. Food-based digestive enzymes help prevent occasional heartburn and may reduce stress from processed foods and heavy metals. Our proprietary probiotics help support immune health, regulate bowels, and eliminate toxins. Improve your mood, mental clarity, focus, faster rejuvenation, and better sleep. Order now at eatessentialsnow.com. Essentials, 
life-enhancing ingredients in the palm of your hand. EatEssentialsNow.com Time and the Bruca Cafe is open for business. Live from Studio A in the Heart of Delray Gallery, Dawn and Freddie S. and their team are ready to serve up a huge portion of fun for lunch with friends and neighbors. So let's break open that lunch pail and unwrap that sandwich you brought and take a front row seat to Brooklyn Cafe and get ready to enjoy some humor and hot topics. It's time to get a healthy serving of hope and happiness to help your day go by with a smile. Your hosts, Dawn and Freddie S., are ready to talk about food, health, dating, or just plain dream making. If you have a story to share, a movie review, restaurant critique, or just a coincidental thing that happened to you, call in toll free at 888-565-1470 right now. Sit back and enjoy your lunch break at the Brooklyn Cafe. Here are your hosts, Dawn and Freddie S., All right, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Brooklyn Cafe. No music this time around, which is okay. That's okay. Let's go. That's all right. Don't worry about it. Let's just go, go, go. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Brooklyn Cafe part two on this beautiful, part two, beautiful part two Monday. Two and a half. Three? Two and a half, three. I don't know. We've lost track. <laughs> but welcome to all our friends in South Florida, LA, San Francisco, New York, Chicago, anybody, anywhere else you can see us. You can also see us in the Caribbean and in Europe. Did you We're know in the that? Caribbean too? Yeah. Really? And we're also in Europe. We're number one in, ooh, I don't remember the country. It starts with an N. Norway? Norway. Wow. Okay. You like how he looks at you? from Norway coming to visit me today. There you go. Yeah. You see, because I knew she was, uh, had <laughs> something to do with Norway. <laughs> you knew she was here. Right. Welcome to, I'm going to call it a Women's Empowerment Monday with Freddie. That's right. And if you haven't been listening to the show today, Boy, do we got some news for you. All about, it's always about women's empowerment, but today we have United Women's Professional with us. We've got Michelle with us. We're talking women empowerment, Miss Universe, pageants, beauty, business. You know what, ladies? You can have it all, and it's all just about reaching and doing it, and we're going to keep going. I know now, there's did a little we, bit of feedback. Did we, I'm going to take care of that right that? now. Did, did we make the pot of coffee or no? <laughs> there's a whole there's a whole reservoir right, Freddie, on there. Oh, you keep talking coffee, we're gonna keep going and in our first hour we talked about we w would be remiss if we did not just pay our respects and condolences not even the a competent word for what happened Saturday um, at the synagogue in Pittsburgh the tree of life it has been there for 150 years and the rabbi today said they will rebuild they just cannot open the same I have the chills they cannot open the sanctuary the way it is with the bullet holes and the way it stands but they will rebuild and the community is coming forward and everyone is in support and we talked about it before, it's not just about anti-Semitism, it's about hate as a whole and the community, the world, the country, we just need to come together and just, just stop the violence and the hate every which way and anyone who can get us a filter for the Brooklyn Cafe that we need to put a new frame and as all of, we stand against anti-Semitism and we do, but we stand against hate as for every culture and we're here with Latino women, we're here you're from, pronounce it for me the right Namibia. way. Namibia. Thank you, Namibia. Namibia, because I remember my daughter actually did a project in high school on Namibia, and I went, really? And it's funny, and I'm reading all the work on you, and I thought, wow, I am just fascinated to hear more about what you do in this universe. But it's about cross-cultures, and it's about hate and what we do. And Sandra, you've got a mic. Yes. As a Latina woman, and we were talking with Yelena, Yelena a multicultural. It's hate, and it's something we just have to stop. And we talk every day about kindness here and hope every day on the cafe. And I guess we all just don't make as much noise as the, those, those one bad or two bad people that come forward with the noise and the hate they make. We just have to make more noise on the hope For sure. and the love, right? You said love, the showering of love. Freddie liked the shower side, I like the love side, but it's what it's about, right? We have to make more noise. <laughs> and be kind to each other and lift each other up. And that's really what today is. Freddie's making a pot of coffee if you're wondering where he is. We've got 30 women. Talk about changing cultural roles, Freddie. You are sweeping today and now you're, oop. And pop, there goes the water. And now you're making a pot of coffee. How much coffee did you 
<laughs> well, I made it a little strong because we have our new organic line of coffee, which is stronger than the other coffee brand that we had. So Chanel said she was doubling it. So I didn't even double it, but it's a little strong. It's all gone, though. So Freddie's making a pot of coffee, and we're going to continue with our women empowerment segment. We've had Hector on board, and Annie was with us, and Annie, you, and um, Sandra, you did a great piece. Thank you. You know, I wanted to say, somebody, I, I read something once, that there is more love and more kindness, and we just see the bad stuff, like you were just mentioning. You know, but there is so much more love and kindness happening. More people are more compassionate and more empathetic, and it's sad that those couple times we see incidences like this, it's, we, we think, gosh, there's a lot of hate still, you know, in the world. And it just takes one. Like, sometimes the bad is so bad. It just overpowers, I can't say it overpowers, it tries to outshine the light and the love. And it does for that brief moment and it takes lives away. And then we all have to rebuild and come together with more love and kindness and it's just what we have to do. I know you call me hug a tree, but I will continue to love and hug trees because <laughs> the platform just has to grow. Well, it's funny because you get a natural disaster like what happened in um, the Panhandle. Yes. People have to come together to help one another in Puerto Rico and um, in different parts of the world where there are hurricanes and you know mother nature has a way of getting even and the sooner we start getting hit to the deal the better this is going to be I mean, you don't need to kill each other and we're going to have earthquakes and everything else it'll take care about that don't worry about that it's going to happen no matter what so why can't we just get along what was that guy in well, california that said that right yeah mm -hmm. can't we just, can get, just along? get along that's it i mean and again, it's all, about, it's all about doing, not the same. You know, you, you brought in another fantastic cast with the women here today, and, and you got a platform. Now we need to stretch it and push it and go in different directions and make a difference. Mm -hmm. You know, you Miss Universe, when you won your deal, mm -hmm. um, they <laughs> asked you. Michelle McLean Bailey, when she won her deal in 1992. When she won your deal, and they ask you, right? They ask you questions about what would you do, how would you yeah. do it? And, and I guess the, the, the overall sort of look at it is it's very cliche. Um, us pageant girls will always answer, we want to save the world and peace for everybody. But the wonderful thing is that most women who get that platform as a former you know, Miss Universe or as a title holder around the world, she represents her country as an ambassador. She does wonderful philanthropic work. She gets an opportunity to use her platform for the good for other people. Right. So when all these naysayers are, are saying, you know, pageants are all about superficiality and all of that, I think we've proven around the world that it really has a platform that does great for communities uh, you know, around the world. So How did you get involved in the pageant world? We talked a little bit about pageants traditionally now, but in 1992, pageants were different. You think about, that's when my daughter was born, and, <laughs> yeah. and I think, wow, I mean, just being raised to be able to, mm. we talk culturally and getting out of the box. Well, I think being emancipated, especially coming from Africa and coming from a colonized sort of area of the world, being an air hostess or being a secretary or something like that to be able to get out and actually travel was something really wonderful. So being in pageants, for me it was different. I was actually a model at the age of 13, but I was a tomboy and my mom decided she would send me to a modeling school because she needed me to start becoming a lady. So I won by default <laughs> this, this modeling contract. Then I entered Miss Namibia on a dare uh, by a bunch of guy friends, I was training for a triathlon, and they said, you can win a car and a computer course, you can set yourself up for life at the age of 18. So I thought, hey, why not take a chance? And I won Miss Namibia, and then I didn't realize I had to go and represent my country at the Miss World pageant and the Miss Universe pageant. So oh boy, <laughs> it sucks to be you, I can tell you. <laughs> I was like, ooh, a deer in the headlights. But it was a wonderful opportunity. I took the bull by the horns, and I said, if I'm going to do something with this, it's got to be something that's powerful and positive and something good for my country and for my people. And now you've taken the platform and I know you aren't, we're on a time constraint, so we're going to fast forward many years. I feel like the art of cooking, right? You open the stove and pop <laughs> here we are. So we open the stove and pop here she is and take in a whole new stance on women empowerment. Right, well when I became Miss Universe I started a foundation called the Michelle McCain Children Trust. Now 26 years later I've worked with Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt raising funds for many hundreds of projects in Namibia. I have a school, a hospital ward, so I was able to do a lot of great work over these years in Namibia. But when, when I moved to America about four years ago, I realized that my philanthropic, you know, my nature, my passion, I still have my foundation there, but I wanted to get involved in the community here. So, and, and I must say that most Americans are very unaware of the fact that you are the most philanthropic country and nation in the world. 
You, it's amazing how you teach children in school to be aware of their communities, to do community work. That's a very much a part of our society. So when you say we need to do more, I say Americans can actually be very proud of what they achieve and what they do for the rest of the world. In fact, I get goosebumps because not only are you helping the rest of the world, but you have such a philanthropic nature about you. Be proud of it, but learn to support each other and remember that it's not about who's got the upper hand here. It's about love and not about hate and not about somebody um, having you know a better platform than you. It's and about again, everybody it's about working together. about teaching our kids young. We talk about it all the time. Hate. You're not born to hate. It's you no, learn Mandela it. said those words. In fact, that's one of his you know mottos was no child was born hating. Right. We we're all born with the love in us. And with the foundation that you're doing, and we have to teach our children young to love and, and to give back. And philanthropy, whatever it is you're giving, whether it be financial or time or compassion to another child, we just have to learn to give back. Absolutely. And now you're working with women. Yes, yes, I'm very fortunate to be able to use my platform. I've got a company called the Business of Beauty. And so I take women who are in the pageant and beauty industry and I coach them and help them realize that they can create wonderful careers out of what they can achieve in the beauty industry for the longevity of their career, but also philanthropically to see and to help them guide them their businesses and their philanthropic work. Because it's so important to find some sort of a, a balance in, in your life as women. You know, we now all work we all do philanthropic um, you know, endeavors, and we have children, and so it's important to create that balance. So what about women that say, Michelle, sorry, I'm not six feet tall and I don't look like you. How can I be in the beauty business? Oh my gosh, there's so many different ways to be in the beauty in industry. I mean, a lot of my friends have started um, cosmetic brands in, the, in, their, in their garages at home, and, and now they're they billionaires. Them. You know, it's, it's amazing. There's so many different myriad um, faces to the beauty industry. Yeah, it, it's uh, refreshing to hear, number one, first thing, is that we actually do something abroad that can be applauded. Because I'm always hearing about how we never do enough. Oh, gosh. No, you and what a mess we are in the whole nine. You know, sometimes if we talk better about ourselves, we'll feel better about ourselves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The other thing is that the beauty part is one aspect, but you're talking about a businesswoman. You've taken the opportunity given to you and you've created different platforms, and mm -hmm. I did a little research on you, you're all over the place. Well, we were talking about women being put in a box earlier, and you can imagine, I've been put in a box my whole life. I've had to strive to really show that I do businesses in realty and jewelry and many other things. I'm now promoting a laser um, equipment called the Time Machine. I mean, like, who would have thought that? It's just that you keep having to reinvent yourself and not put yourself in a box. Just because I was a beauty queen does not mean I have no brains. Plenty of brains, now plenty does of that, <laughs> it, it, does that is that a, a different approach that people look at you first as a beauty queen or a businesswoman? Um, very much so. When I walk into a room, it's like, oh, right. So well, your presence. What does she have to offer? <laughs> I mean, your presence, your height, what you look like, you're beautiful, and you're beauty queen. I mean, Miss Universe. I won't deny the fact that when I was younger, especially, when you walked into a room, you got a little bit ahead of everybody else because you walked in with the stature and the, you know, and people would look at you. But you have to have the essence behind you if you're going to hold that room captive. So you have to, you have to work on yourself and and work on you know other aspects of yourself besides your physicality. And what you do, beauty really comes from the inside out. So you can work in the beauty business and your hair and your makeup is the exterior, right? So it's the presence when you walk into a room. You feel great as a woman. You walk in you know you're on your game. Mm. But right, that only holds it for so long. You have to have that inner confidence and that inner beauty to say, let's be philanthropic, let's give back. Especially you have to be somebody that people want to connect with. Um, but you have to sell that too, right? You gotta make it so people are comfortable to do that. It, it's, not, it's a give and take, it's a, like you said, a balance. Yeah. I and there's nothing more sexy than a businesswoman that walks in and knows what the hell she's doing. The yeah. same thing goes for guys. You know, you got a guy who, who's on point and it doesn't really matter what he looks like. It matters that this guy can actually make things happen and get it mm -hmm. done. And I, and I hate to use examples, but it's all around us. And you have that whole nature, that natural thing going on right now that you are a businesswoman first. That's the well, most important you know, thing. Right this now. whole Me Too moment came up a couple of uh, months ago, and now you, it's very much related to the pageant industry, how Miss America, how Gretchen took this as one of her campaigns personally. And, and I can st speak out about it because the Miss Universe organization took a different stance to it. 
that, you know, as women, yes, you know, some women are approached in a, in a, you know, in a way that is really um, uncomfortable in most business aspects, and they need to be able to um, find a voice for that. But not all beautiful women, and not all women, are um, treated like that. You know, everyone has a different experience. Um, and certainly when a woman is empowered, educated, she has the power to be able to step out of those situations. But I totally agree, women that are not educated, do not get given the opportunity to speak up, are going to be victims. And they, they are out there and we need to support them and help them. But education is number one, especially for our boys in society today. That's right. The mothers with boys need to educate the boys. That's true. It's an interesting take, women. right? Mm -hmm. Well, they're right. You gotta teach. You gotta teach the persons that are making the mistakes because, like you said before, hate is taught. So maybe hate we ain't doing such a good job teaching the boys as well. You know, Start being young. a gentleman. Yeah, you gotta do it. All right, we're Did gonna you see that post I, I put on Facebook? Which one? About fathers and sons made me think when you said that about what we need to teach our boys. And my son commented. He said, "Thanks, mom." It was a little bit, and it was a puzzle piece, and there was a complete son. He was missing a puzzle piece, and the dad. And there was a whole list of things, and the dad had all his puzzle pieces missing, but he had that missing piece that he gives his son up. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. That's and amazing. That, that, and again, I have two boys, and they have always been gentlemen with, um, and they're both married now, having children and everything else, and they tell me 100% women first, and they have a whole different take on how we were raised, you know, that's in my house. interesting point, Michelle, that you say that. It's about teaching our boys. It's not only about empowering the women. It's about teaching the boys and the girls to to empower each other, right? Mm. We, we need to come together as a society. Let's go to commercial break. Okay. When we come back, I don't know if Michelle's going to still be here, but we got the other ladies of United Women Professional, Michelle McLean Bailey, and we will be right back. team specializes in finding the best alternative laser therapy treatments for your painful conditions. Do you suffer with chronic pain, post-traumatic injury, or simply looking for the benefits of cell rejuvenation to the skin? Schedule a consultation today to understand how photobiomodulation can help reduce your symptoms, reduce or even eliminate pain. Give us a call today, 561-405-405. 9577. We focus on treating you who has a disease, not a disease that defines who you are. Contact Carmen Care Laser Therapy today, 561 405 9577 or CarmenCareLaser.com. I got a guy. You need a guy? I got a guy. With V Card Global, all your contacts are in the palm of your hand. Never leave home without your business cards or brochures again. VCard is the ultimate marketing tool. No more printing cards or brochures. VCard fits in the palm of your hand and is always with you. VCard is a powerful networking tool that virtually promotes sharing and builds referrals for your business. VCard Global, the virtual business card. Hold your business in the palm of your hand. Contact Jennifer at J E N N G. Vcardinfo.com, the world's most intelligent business card. I got a guy. J E N N G. Vcardinfo.com. Do you suffer from pain, anxiety, or inflammatory autoimmune disease? Are you ready to feel your best and take responsibility for your own health? At the wellnesslabstore.com, we offer an array of CBD cannabinoid products to help increase immunity, reduce pain, regulate your moods, and improve sleep. CBD works by interacting with a person's endocannabinoid system to keep your body in balance. Visit the wellnesslabstore.com and begin your journey to a life of better health. Safe for all ages and your pets with no psychotropic effects. Contact us today, the wellnesslabstore.com. Thank you, thank you, thank you for 
watching the Brooklyn Cafe, where every day is a new adventure. If you'd like to join Dawn and Freddy S. at the cafe, give them a call at 888-565-1470, toll free. Come on in for a cup of coffee or call to share a thought for the day and get all the information you need to help your business grow. Don't forget, sharing is caring, and to like this video, let's reopen the cafe doors now. Back to Dawn and Freddy S. And we're back. How about that? How about that? Sound 101. Maverick, you're hired. Maverick on the board? <laughs> Maverick is going to go from doing that to doing the next one to doing the next one to doing the next one. I we, can throw, see it. we throw you right in. And Friday we had, what, 14 interns? Today I think we've got three. The beauty of why we keep bringing more and more forward. This portion of the show is brought to you by? The Brooklyn Cafe Coffee, Burke Brands. We have to thank Darren from Burke Brands Coffee. What an incredible job he has done with this coffee. This is actually the bean roast. There's the beans. Gotta and love it. I actually got five orders. I know the restaurants want espresso. We've got a few bags down there. I got ex we have espresso though? We do. We do? Mm -hmm. Oh, you gotta give me that so I can send it out. People want espresso, they want the organic, they want all sorts of stuff. So. Where do you sell it? You're looking at it. Right here. Right here, okay. We sell it here. <laughs> we sell it across the board. We sell coffee, we brand things. There are people in here that didn't even know what I did. She says, why are you telling me to come in for you? Come in. Come in where? She walks in, she goes, I didn't know you did this. You didn't, I didn't know you did it either. I don't know what I do either. It's called the Woman Empowerment Hour. Woman Empowerment, three stage. hours is what we're doing. Yes. Ms. Uh, Sandra, tell us about the ladies that we have also on set. Yes, I brought in Liza and Jeanette. Uh, they do a couple different things. I feel all They do a couple different things, and I'd rather them share with you, but I met them because we're collaborating with United Latinas to really put on the conference that I was talking to you about. Um, and they are power horses in the Broward County uh, and South Florida area. And they do, they have a promotional company that they'll share, but they're also in, in, involved in a lot of community work. When power we're horse. talking about Hispanic vote and getting people to out. So oh, that's a whole nother aspect. You talk about voting, everyone's early voting. And yeah. it's not whether you're registered to vote, it's whether you actually go out and vote. So as, there are as more, women, right, and uh, millennials. There are more early voters ever mm -hmm. that are voting now. It's going to change the face of this country. Yes. I'm going to tell you, if you are a politician, you're in deep doo-doo. Sure. <laughs> you, did you vote? Sure. Are you going to vote? Uh, I did vote. Are you, yeah. Did you change? I, did you go I for the change? In, uh, you sent an absentee. <clears throat> Maverick, are you registered local? I am not registered. How about you, Hector? You think you are? Yeah, it's in the sun. And there you I hate it. I hate voting because then I get caught for jury duty. It never fails. Really? Yep. Well, never so fails. Because I'm not a, a citizen yet. All right. I've got a few months to go. Tell, well, you tell, tell me who you want me to vote for. Yeah. <laughs> so you got a few more. <laughs> tell me who you want me to vote for. I'll give you my vote. No, I'm only kidding. Oh, Voting man. is very important. Only kidding. I saw some only stuff kidding. on Facebook yesterday that Take was just easy. out of control. No, right. I would never. We don't do politics, but. It was just out of control. Right, if you talk about hate, forget it. All right, let's move on, because I want to meet the powerful workhorse. The ladies of Fort Lauderdale. How about that? The ladies of Fort Lauderdale. Well, welcome, Jeanette mm -hmm. and Lice. You like that? The ladies like of Fort yeah. Lauderdale. Who's going first? They work together, so yeah. tell us about what you all do. Sure. My name is Jeanette Montalvo. I'm with Bravo County. Jeanette Black. Montalvo. Jeanette Montalvo. 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 Que Latino name. Yeah, very Montalvo. Um, we're with Bravo County Latin Entrepreneurs, and what we do, we provide workshops at our office we do events we go out to businesses small businesses uh, we take um, our cameras over there we have a gentleman that helps us out with that and we promote the small businesses that nobody really knows about how long you been doing this uh since right after hurricane maria since november right november it was september right oh, relatively new yeah so and we also provide all types of printing products we do promotional products we do the t-shirts, the pants, anything that you need your name or your company name printed on. We have a website. It's www.bcalepromotions.com. You could go in there and search for whatever you want. And we also can go out to your business, meet with you, and we could set up you know, a program. BCLE, Broward County Latin Entrepreneurs, if you're Correct. wondering what that stands Correct. for. Broward okay. County Latin Entrepreneurs. So when you go out with your cameras, are you shooting commercials? You're doing video for no, social media? No, what do you it's doing? just really quick little, maybe two, three minute shot of what the business is, where they're at, because they're small, mainly Hispanic businesses people don't know about. So we just put them out there on social media. We just started with that, not something major like this, but. You know, we want people to know these businesses are there and come I, out I know and a lady, support them. Somewhere. I know a lady who had a radio station. She had her own show. And this is, 
This is like everything we talked about. <laughs> I mean, are you kidding me? I guess that's why we're in the groove together because we're all out to empower. You know that two by four owners. that I always say to you has to hit me in the head? Yeah. She needs like a four by four because <laughs> what she brings forward and the greatness of you and who you bring forward, Sandra, we got to get more of you. Thank you. But the funny thing is that we came up with an idea. We didn't have a plan and then the plan comes and falls in front of you. We've been trying to do this for the longest. What you ladies are doing right now um, is what we applaud. We're looking for that. You know, Latinos don't have staying power exactly. unless you're Goya. Exactly. Right? <laughs> or Badia. Goya, Badia you could put a rock in Goya and you're going to sell a can, exactly. right? Exactly. One day or, I'm going to bring you a can of Goya. Or Bustelo. I have it. I'll bring it. <laughs> I got black beans. You can sell it. Yeah. Or you put Bustelo. Bustelo and Goya. Those are the two things that Latinos are known for, right? Coffee. <laughs> And adobo, adobo. Uh, yeah, but adobo, yes, adobo, yeah, yeah, adobo. adobo, pero adobo, yeah. sazón, yeah. sazón, yeah. which is what MSG, isn't sazón MSG? Yeah, pretty much. It's like bouillon, right? Yeah. Oh, they love it. She, they need a mic. We all have sazón. Ah, the spark, the spicy side, what it is? Sazón. You know what sazón is? You don't know what Yes, that is. it's like bouillon in our religion. Yes, it's like a bouillon. It's all Except salt, there's sodium, bouillon MSG. MSG. Okay. MSG. But regardless of that. I, 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 want, oh, sorry. I want to share with you also our office is in Coral Springs. And if anybody wants to come over and do a small workshop of what your business represents, you're welcome. We don't charge. We just invite everybody. Everybody gets to network and meet each other. And our office is available. How big is your office? We fit about 30 people. 2530. So maybe all we go down there and do a office. show. All types. Yeah. Why don't we go down there and do a three hour show? I'm down. <laughs> that would be and then let's invite in businesses and interview them. Let's invite the whole house. And you know, in my contract now, I put in for potty time and food. Potty time? Mm. Potty breaks. Oh. I, I lost my train potty of thought. But I mean, think about it. You <laughs> want to make sure. Last week you had me on for eight hours. <laughs> By the yeah, but it's only three hours. Yeah, three hours. Like easy. It's easy. We yeah. go down there. We take the party bus uh, down. And the party bus continues. We have a well, party I bus. I want to ask you: Did Hurricane Maria inspire you to come forward with the business? Well, I was already involved. Can I get you closer to the mic, please. Um, my name is Liza, and I was already involved um, helping the community because I was chair of the Puerto Rican Hispanic Chamber of Commerce of Broward County. And when Hurricane Maria happened, Frank decided to go to Puerto Rico and put the chamber on hold. And I was like, we can't let this happen in Broward. We need to continue and make a voice here. So I got together with Janet and Wendy, and we created Broward County Latin Entrepreneurs. Um, I myself am vice chair of Hispanic Vote. I am on the local advisory board for the Aging and Disability Resource Center. I am 2016 Hispanic Woman of Distinction. I'm part of the new AARP Hispanic Woman Group. Um, There's so an AARP Hispanic Group? Yes. Woman Group. A woman group. Women's Group. It just started gonna... um, in 2016 uh, and is, is like an advisory board. Um, they haven't found me yet. <laughs> <laughs> But this is, you know, it's impressive. The two of you, you're right. You're talking about two powerhouses coming together. If you don't make noise here, you ain't never going to make no noise. You got to make some noise. It's happen. I think we have to make some noise. Michelle, it's all about, right? You're from Namibia. Well, Talk about making noise. Well, People you, think, where is even this country, right? And here you are now in the United <coughs> States with a huge presence and a huge platform to share. And look at all of these women we can inspire. Mm. But it is, you see, inspire. America is really inspirational in terms of what you've achieved in the short space of time. It's incredible. And you use the resources available to you, social media, and you're helping the communities. That's just incredible. Yeah. Now, you realize that media is what controls the minds in this country. Good, better, and different. Exactly. I mean, when the president is using Twitter to fight against CNN, you know, you got a problem, right? But if it's done correctly, this is what I talk about. If you do things incorrectly, you're going to get incorrect results. She, she's dying. She's got something to say. <laughs> yes, of course. Hi, everyone. I'm so happy to be here with all of you. My name is Sherry Klein. I'm an independent consultant with a company that has a thriving Latin entrepreneurs group. And they meet twice a month in Broward County. I would be delighted to hook you up with them. The company is Market America. And they actually uh, help people develop 
an extra stream of income alongside whatever other businesses or careers, jobs that they have just by shopping online. And we teach them how to shop online through a specific site and get paid, and it's, it's all about teamwork. Now this isn't Secret Shopper, right? No, I don't okay. even know what that is. Mm -hmm. I was gonna do that once too. <laughs> yeah, I, I this is that. a 26-year-old, <clears throat> A-plus rated by the Better Business Bureau company that's an online powerhouse. Uh, she sounds know, like Judy. They're, they're, they're in fact, <laughs> one of the largest um, affiliate marketing companies out there. So mm -hmm. if you're shopping on Target.com or Walmart, hotels, airlines, gasoline, restaurants, anything and everything, we simply show people how to shop online and generate an extra stream of income. You know, my son, <clears throat> he shops everything online. There you go. I, well, we're in an online everything. shopping revolution. Yes, so why not own a piece of it? as an extra stream of income. It just makes sense. So I ordered some parts for, for the studio on Amazon. And he calls me, he says, what are you doing? And I says, I'm ordering the, he says, dad, give me the parts. So I send it to him, do you know I got it? If not the same day, I can get it the next day. Sure. Free delivery, free everything. Meanwhile, I was gonna wait a week. Right. Why? Because there's a right way of shopping and this is my way of shopping, you know, which is incorrect. <laughs> it's Freddie, it's like, it's technology. You why, gotta learn it. Why drive a horse and buggy when you can be in, say, a Tesla? You know, I You're mean, right. this technology is to benefit us. And so we have ways, you, you know, even if somebody says they like to go to the store, which sometimes I like to do too, you wanna see something so and you feel, feel it, it touch and touch it. it. You can go in the store and then buy it on your mobile phone, standing in the store and get paid for shopping on the site. Sandra, I got a question for you. Yes. What are you going to do with all these ladies and this What's amazing the, power? What are you going to do, Sandra? What are you going to do? Because you've just brought an entire studio full of incredible women. And now what? I feel like now you're going to go to Disney World. No, but what are you going to do? Because when we bring people forward, Freddie is the king of follow-up, mm -hmm. the master of bringing it all together. Yeah. You've got all of this amazing power, these women to come together. Yeah. Now what? You know, it's about collaborating. Let's, you know, all of us in a room, like with Jeanette and Liza, we, we actually sit down and we have a committee planning meeting where we get together and we brainstorm and we put together ideas of what we could do for our conference. For the United Women Professionals, it's this is gonna be the same thing. Wendy and I are gonna be meeting afterwards and really putting together the book project that I was talking about and really executing on that and getting all the other women involved. But it's exactly like you said, it's now what? Everybody has different personalities, you know? So it's who wants in. You know, you can't force anybody to do anything. It's about, all right, who wants more out of life? You know, and it's really getting that out of somebody. Okay, you, you wanna write a book, you wanna build a company, let's get together at the table and let's discuss different ideas and concepts of what we can do. The table. The now, table. you know, let me ask you, let me ask everybody a question. Time is valuable to everybody, mm -hmm. right? So if you ask somebody to give you an hour a week Small amount of time, but an hour a week, sometimes you can't get that commitment because everybody's so busy yeah. chasing the rabbit, right? You're chasing the rabbit. But think about this. We have an affiliation program with different restaurants. So there's a post of this coming that we made, as seen on, and this is going to go in every restaurant on Atlantic Avenue, and we're heading south yeah. to every restaurant, every business, the whole nine. And we're bringing our coffee into these different businesses. I don't care if I make a nickel on it. It makes no difference. I'm not looking for the money. I'm looking for to bring these ladies onto that stage. Yes. So we have meetings throughout Atlantic at restaurants during the way, during the weekend, the whole night. They're coming at me now mm -hmm. because you got numbers. You got people's attention, mm -hmm. right? So what I want to know is why is it so difficult, my, my Latino brothers and sisters, to give me a commitment of time? I need time. I need some time. What do you want? Who's giving you issues? Let's have a conversation. Okay. <laughs> we shall do that. Yeah. I sure. think we should bring together a hundred companies. I don't care where they come from. We'll take them ten at a time. Yeah. And let's make some noise. I'm about that. You know what? Oh, no, I know you're about you that. You really are about that. And I want, it's about women. Hector, it's why this piece that you're working on, once you get these amazing butterflies in it, he's working on a piece for me that is about finding this platform. If a tree falls in the forest and nobody's there to hear it, doesn't make a noise. Sometimes it's like when you're talking around your dinner table and nobody hears what you say. It's what I said in the last hour. And it's about, here is your voice. Find your beauty inside, Michelle. What you can create on the outside, because everyone is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it's just realizing your beauty from within 
and showing the world what you have to say because everyone, every single one, has something to say. But the bottom line here is that everything that you ladies are working on, you have numbers. You have numbers. You have forget power a, behind you. Forget about, forget about how attractive all you women are. It has nothing to do with that. Let's put that to the side for 10 seconds. You got numbers. When you have numbers, there's a lot of things you can do. Yeah. We just have to play the right stone. Because one mistake can throw you back another 10 months. That's really what it comes down to. Being aggressive. Where's my real estate lady? Being, Being aggressive. That's where the digital marketing comes in. It's where the book comes in. It's where you're training in beauty. It's where you, right? we see the value. The value of the presence when you walk in a room. What you wear. How you walk in a room. How you have your head held high. That's right. Not looking down at the floor. Do you know that most guys always look at a woman's eyes to say, okay, I'm going to get over on her because she's looking down. Well, how the hell are you going to see straight if you're looking down? <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you Is that you just people? your experience? Yeah. Well, <laughs> Angela, tell you. I think Angela and Michelle, what you, the two of you can create together with your beauty business and how you teach and create. And when you feel good on the outside, and then we're going to go to commercial break, and you can walk into a room and say, I got this. Do you know why she says that? Why? Because she's so much taller than she well, has. Well, I was about to say, I hardly look into a man's right, eye because right. I'm so tall. <laughs> I knew <laughs> that was coming. usually looking at my navel. <laughs> I knew that was coming. Looking at and her you navel. you had to go there again. Looking at her navel. Guy. She said it. I did. <laughs> but I didn't say navel. anything else. I said my navel. <laughs> That's it. I'm done. I'm out of here. <laughs> and he's so set up on that one. Three. Three. I even tried to save you on that I one. I know. I know. You I saw it coming. Let me save you. I saw it coming. Let's take a quick commercial break. When we come back, give us a call. 888 Five six five fourteen seventy ninety five three FM fourteen seventy AM and we will be right, right. back. Sound. Sound. Let's all welcome a new sponsor to the show. It's M2 TV, the first and only internet production company that's truly plugged in. When you're looking for a full-service internet TV radio production company, discover Amp2 TV, a full-service production company that can provide all streaming videos in studio or remotely. They offer web page development, and they use all the latest platforms to help make all your business selling points more powerful. They can do remotes or live radio streaming, as well as tape productions for social media platforms and television. Amp2 TV can handle all of your television needs, including closed captioning for a perfect on-air telecast. Choose from a variety of creative TV and radio packages or visit one of their many studios to get your creative juices flowing. Come and see why Amp2 TV works with many major companies, including Comcast, Bravo, and Fox 29, as well as individuals and businesses of all types and sizes. To see samples of their work or to find out more, visit their website at amp2.tv. That's A-M-E, the number 2.tv. Or call them at 866-224-5422. Feel free to call for a quote or just a consult of how to put your business on a social media platform or radio platform or just doing a show that is covered by all platforms. Call 866-224-5422 and make an appointment. That's 866-224-5422. What is Deborah Sons? With over 25 years of personal training experience and workout techniques, Deb Barcelona invites you to Deborah Sons. Deborah Sons comes to you from the privacy of your own home or group training facility. Deborah Sons can meet your individual fitness needs. Offering one-on-one -on -one non impact resistance training, post-surgical strengthening to higher level boot camp and weight training. Deborah Size will meet your personal fitness goals at any age. Contact Deb at 561-307-9283. Schedule an initial consultation and get ready for a stronger, healthier you. 561-307-9283. Do you want to enhance your love life with flowers? Rejuvenate love, life, health with flowers from Blossom Moments? Weekly deliveries to your home, your business, hospital, or even senior centers. Give us a call at 561-951-6343. Blossom Moments could also coordinate your wedding or event. 
contact Blossom Moments at bmgevents.net. For all of your floral event needs, large or small, call Blossom Moments, 561-951-6343. And we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching the Brooklyn Cafe, where every day is a new adventure. If you'd like to join Dawn and Freddie S. at the cafe, give them a call at 888-565-1470, toll free. Come on in for a cup of coffee or call to share a thought for the day and get all the information you need to help your business grow. Don't forget, sharing is caring, and to like this video, let's reopen the cafe doors now. Back to Dawn and Freddie S. Down and we're back. I'm all tied up in my Damn. microphone. I don't what know. Happened? It went every which way. What happened okay. to you? Yes. What happened? I lowered it. It was like up to my... <laughs> the the is <laughs> it was up to your navel. <laughs> Come sit up here and next to Sherry. And over there, when she come, when she's done Go, talking, grab the everyone's microphone, so busy I can't here hear collaborating and, and networking. We are a giant networking group, is what we are. We network our network. Well, Look at this I mean, group of women. It's you know, amazing. It's funny, Miss Universe is about ten feet tall. She's six foot two, I think. She's huge. And flats. She's very tall, and she's not wearing shoes. But I really look forward to collaborating more with Michelle because not only is the platform about women, her platform is about teaching the kids and the girls in high school. And again, it takes me back to Mirror Man because I really want to get that selfie mirror and get this platform going. I want the girls and their moms to look in this giant selfie mirror instead of taking a selfie and altering it and making yourself look perfect, really look in the mirror and say, what is it? What is your empowerment? And stand proud in what you look like and who you are and see this mirror for what it is, not just a tool on social media because you you know, taking out all your wrinkles and your pimples and made yourself look a little bit thinner. It's about the power of what's in your eyes and who you are from the inside out. And I'm going to get that mirror here one way or another. And Michelle McBail Michelle McLean Bailey's going to let us do that. Mirror, mirror, man. Exactly, mirror, mirror. Man. Did you tell her? I tell him all the time. I just need that platform, and so she'll help us put a, together a seminar. I could bring you a mirror. I don't. I don't need the mirror. I need the girls to see the mirror. I need. Didn't to you get talk to about doing the small mirror piece? I talk about a lot of things. I just need more okay. manpower. Okay. Actually, I need more girl power is what I need. I don't need the manpower. I need the girl power. We got them. <laughs> We're talking about books. And my friend here, Aunt Dector. Dector. I'm just Dector. I have not seen Aunt. Our boys went to Mommy and Me together when they were, I think, two. Yes. And every, things change and the world changes. And she sent me this message on Facebook. I saw that she wrote a book. So I think she's sending me she wrote a book to bring her here. Mm -hmm. I said, come. So she comes. She says, I didn't know you did this. What, what I kind said, of, you sent me a message. I, what said, kind of, I never wrote a message. What kind of book did you write? I wrote a book called, You're Not Here to Be Good, You're Here to Be Better, How to Reclaim Hope, Purpose, and Fulfillment in a World Gone Crazy. Mm. And how do you like that for Synergy today? Holy smokes. Wait a minute. So you wrote this when? I just, it's going to be uh, available December 1st on Amazon. Do you have a copy of the book? Not yet. You? Do you think, didn't send you a reader's copy? Well, we're doing all the formatting right now, but okay. again, I had no idea I was going to be here, Dawn. <laughs> I, I said, had no, how about put me on the spot? Dawn had no idea she was going to be here either. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's how it rolls. This is Freddie 101. I don't even know. who. You, do you know how, how I know who's going to be on the show? Uh, she she does, tells you? No, she does a posting in the morning, morning. and I read it. But today was about women empowerment and how you came today and you had a meeting. You happened to be in Delray. We call it coincidence, we call it serendipity, some people call it synergy, but there's a reason today is about hope. Every day, if Annie were here, she'd be dancing. Every day the word seems to come back to hope because yeah. it has to be hope and kindness, right, and empowering each other. But tell us a little bit about your book. You were not always a writer. No, I wasn't always a writer. I started on the journey about 24 years ago, learning about the universal wisdom based in, the, in Judaism. And it was fascinating to me, and it had answers to everything, all of life's questions. And as the years went on, I realized that people were really missing answers. And so I started teaching, I started talking, and before you knew it, I had a private, uh, I'm, a, I'm a life coach, and people come to me, and they all said to me, would you please put this into a book? Just please, get it out there. Everyone needs to know this wisdom. And that's how it happened. I started writing, I put it together, and talk about synergy. There was one afternoon where a friend said to me, I'm having people come from LA 
they would like to meet people in the community, would you come over? I said, okay, not that I think that I'm the greatest person to meet, but let's go visit people. I asked the man, I said, what do you do for a living? And he said to me, I edit and publish books with positive messages. That was it, all the bells went off in my head. Wow. And I said, you know what, I think I have something to say. I said to him, I said, I think I have a book. He said, great. He said, come to my hotel tonight, bring me a sample of your writings. Of course he did. <laughs> I brought my husband. Of course you did. Do you know, everywhere you go that you walk a, a path and you walk through a door, something fantastic happens. Yes. So that's the message to all. That's the message. And here you are again. And I always say, when you get out of the house, when you get off your lazy butt, and I can sit in front of the TV like anybody else and be happy, but when you go out there and make something happen, when you go, you know that expression, God takes care of those that take care of themselves? That's right. Go out there and make something happen. You never know who you're going to meet. And that's what happened today. Literally, Don, I was at an appointment down the road on Federal Highway when I got your text. And I went, what? Yeah, but you showed up. Do you know how many people we invite that don't show up? They don't show up. And then that's they, the message. And show up in your life. And it's show funny up. There because you have. Show up in your message. life. But it's yeah. funny because now more people are showing up that we had asked before. Mm -hmm. And we says, well, now you have to wait because there's a lot of people and yada, yada, yada. What do you mean I got to wait? <laughs> it's the funniest thing. Now, I have a question because we only have a few minutes. Is, is a platform important? Like she wrote a book. Is it important for your message to be based on a platform that's big? Or is it easier just to go out there and have people talk selectively? What's the more important approach? I think if you have something impactful to say, which I think everybody does, it's always, you're gonna start small, but it's always about getting your message out there in a bigger platform. And the more collaborations, the more that that will happen. So a concert, when you have a singer at a concert, that's more effective than having, I don't know, what is this? Well, you always say it doesn't matter whether you, there's 100,000 people listening or one. It's yeah. just the right pair of ears. Right, you right. walked yeah. into this event, you met this one man who will publish a book. And now you've taken your ideas and you have a voice. It's, so it starts with you. It starts with realizing you have something to say. And if it's a book, it's a, a page, it's a chapter. You, you're looking at me. She's, everyone's shaking their head. It's about finding what it, heck, I never knew I had anything to say. Well, you know, you have to sell your book. Say Do you again. realize you have to sell your book? Of course. Now, how long have you, how long has it gone to production, to publishing? How long has it been? How long has the process been? Yeah. Look, I guess for everybody it's different, but it took me two years. That's nothing. I know people who have taken six years. 20 years. 20 years to write a book. We just had a book launch. It took her 20 years that to write it. That book over your shoulder is one right there, a Parsley Tea. Paisley. Now, Parsley, Paisley, whatever. I can't, I can't see it. But I'd like to turn my eyes. <laughs> you know, you stink. But the bottom line is that now you have to promote the book. Correct. Every day, everywhere you go, you have to talk about it. You're like a giant billboard. So that and, it that's, and that's a challenge in and of itself. That is the challenge. Because... Just to put yourself out there, the thing that helps me is realizing that the message is not about me. Because this isn't about me. It's about bringing the message out there to the world because we are in a world that's gone crazy. And that's what helps me putting myself out there. It's not a comfortable thing for me to do. I don't think it's comfortable for any of us to put ourselves out there. It's a public forum. The whole world is looking at us. No one likes to be critiqued. But if the message is guiding you, then all that stuff doesn't matter. Make you, make us. It's got to put you out uh, out there. And I know it's uncomfortable. And we did that today. We mm -hmm. did it. I did it on purpose because mm -hmm. uncomfortable is a good thing. But you got to make it you, in order for us to listen as a whole. Because if that doesn't happen, then your chances of being successful are going to shrink. And what do we do when things aren't successful? We retreat. And all of a sudden, a good idea goes sideways. But if you talk about today as a platform, as synergy, as a message, Sandra, oh my gosh, my two by four is now like a four by four. I'm, like, I'm going to throw it at you myself because what you have here, what you have created and you bring forward every day when you come, more and more women to come together to collaborate, for women to even come together and collaborate and play nice in the sandbox, yeah. two women, right? Yeah. You bring 20 women at a time that want to collaborate and want to grow each other. And yeah. then you come forward with a book of hope on a day when clearly Saturday was just a horrific event. Horrific. And every time I say it, I get the chills. Um, about hope and coming together as a nation, as a community. It's not about religion again. It's about hope, mm -hmm. right? And being kind to each other. And that is a trickle effect. You know, when even if one person observes you doing something kind, that 
person that observed you doing that is going to pay it forward. It's gonna, is, that person's gonna do something kind for somebody else. So as small of a platform as you have, you can allow, you can spread love by simply being kind because those acts are gonna trigger. You know, me bringing these women, they're gonna go out and do something kind innately, you know, just because it's all in them anyway. But it's almost like a thought now in the mind of, how could I do something else? Well, we always have a platform, ladies, for anyone you want to bring forward. And for an end of time, Sandra, people who want to get involved in United Women's Professional or your Latino group. Yep. Uh, you can follow on Facebook. Uh, it's Facebook forward, facebook.com forward slash United Women Professionals. And the United Latinas is facebook.com forward slash the United Latinas. Okay. I, ha I just wanted to, a little word on the hate, the issue of hate. It really begins with a simple hello. You know, you walk down the street, you walk into a building, and people don't look at each other. You, you say hello, and people get startled. They think you're going to do something. They're going to mug me. I think if we all start with a simple hello and honest look at them in the face and make them feel special for two seconds, you may turn people around. You, you know, right. it, it's, it's, it could be a mission, you know? Let's start saying hello to 10 people a day. Let everybody do it, you know, move it forward. I did because that people do not do that. Yeah. You right. walk into an yesterday. elevator and you say hello, and people stare at you like you're strange. Just be, we just need be to start. kind. And Ashley is commenting, as a teacher, the teachers, you guys, so much of the burden of our children fall on you because as parents, we don't have them nearly as much time as you have them in the classroom. So Ashley, thank you. Yes, as a teacher, you share your voice and you give them a platform to be heard. And that is what we talked about with Michelle Dawn. DeMarc and Michelle have to leave. But it's about empowering our kids. And hate, you're not born to hate. It's about teaching love and hope. So to all our teachers out there, you have a voice. And I know you can't always be part of these networking groups because you're with our kids. But truly, you are the most valuable Bring them. in our community. Bring the kids. Bring the kids. You know what? Bring the kids. I got no problem with that. We actually Bring had 30 school kids. college, remember? Yeah, I mean, we've done it at Atlantic High School. We went to them because they couldn't come here. How many kids do we have in there? We did no place or hate. Wow. Thank you, ladies, so much for joining us. More to come with the book and all of these amazing programs. We'll see you tomorrow. Same time, different place. We're going to be live on location at the Foxworth Fountain. So come on down and join our holiday More show. More than invited to come on down. Be kind to each other. And don't be late. Bye bye. <laughs>